Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Frederica Wilson just attacked Baron Trump, then got slapped with ultimate karma. Frederick Democrat Frederica Wilson is trying to be relevant. The Floridian got headlines for attacking our president and accusing him of being heartless to a grieving widow. This week she made it even worse and attacked President Trump's young son, Baron Trump. This woman is so damn trashy. Listen. According to PJ Media, Rep. Frederica Wilson predicted that President Trump would resign from office and would make up an excuse like somebody is trying to kill Baron. We just have to, like the slogan says, stay woke, just stay woke, be careful, because I can see the wheels turning now. We're marching toward impeachment, there's no question about it. If that happens, are we prepared? Because it's going to happen, Wilson said Thursday. So we have to make sure, Rev. Sharpton, that we are prepared when this happens so we don't just wake up one day blindsided, she added. I think it's just going to get so tight and it's going to close in and then everybody is going to be indicted around this president, and then he is going to realize he is probably next on the list. And I think he is going to come up with an excuse like somebody is trying to kill Baron, and so I'm going to resign. Share this if you think that this woman needs to go away. She needs to leave our amazing President Trump alone. Let's send her a message and show her how many Trump supporters there are out there. This is karma. Shocking new video surfaces of Nancy Pelosi and she must resign immediately for good of country. Nancy Pelosi is having a tough year. Hillary lost, which wasn't entirely a shock to DC insiders who knew the race was close and knew America loathed Hillary. But no one really saw what Hillary did to the rest of the Democrat ticket coming. Every damn thought, at the very least, they would take back the Senate. Russ Fungold was leading by double digits late in his Wisconsin Senate race. But as the race tightened Hillary's arrogance, she refused pleas for help from Fungold and watched him sink in the polls thinking it wouldn't affect her. But the reason Russ was sinking was because of Hillary and she couldn't bother to even show up in Wisconsin and put up a fight. So the real shocker was not that Hillary lost but that the Dems didn't take the Senate. And that is Hillary's true tragedy, she not only lost the White House but she gave the GOP the Senate. If I was a Democrat I would never forgive her. And Pelosi knew how disastrous that would be. The Democrats have no power, as long as the GOP stays together, they will have none. The best she can hope for is to, to divide and delay. It won't work. But she went out to the podium yesterday to try and was all set to bash Trump's tax plan. But it backfired. Horribly. In the most humiliating way possible. And that is saying a lot for Nancy Pelosi. She either was drunk unprepared, or has some health issues she is hiding from the public because she did not look good. Forgetting what time of day it was, mumbling, forgetting names, botching easy words and butchering complex ones, it was a performance that normally would start cause for her to step down. And should, if she is not of sound mind she must do so for the good of the country. According to the American Mirror this was the most embarrassing of her moments. Why would they take away this extraordinary medical, uh, uh, deduction, medical, extraordinary medical expenses, Pelosi rambled before botching the word permanently, and then it happened. Like a deer caught in the headlights Pelosi had another one of all too frequent brain freeze. How many of these do we have to see before she does the right thing and steps down? She tried to say. Tax advantage to, uh as she looked hopelessly lost at the gasping reporters, as if to say where am I before mumbling something about jobs. It's time Nancy, for the good of the country step down. Share if you agree. Sarah Sanders sends Bush presidents scurrying to dustbin of history with brutal truth after they attacked Trump. 
Today we had some bombshell news from the former Bush presidents. They, more so than Clinton or Obama, always respected the idea that they don't criticize the next guy. Because the job's too hard. But that is all gone now after they launched a combined sneak attack against Trump today. I am not doubting their past service to this great nation and if they really feel this way more power to them. However, if this is political and and is payback for how Trump manhandled low energy Jeb, or called out the establishment for their many failures then it is something else. Time will tell. If you missed it, CNN reported that the elder Bush said of Trump. I don't like him. I don't know much about him, but I know he's a blowhard. And I'm not too excited about him being a leader. George W. Bush filed on to and took a few shots at Trump saying he had no idea what it meant to be in the White House. They are entitled to their opinion. But they are not entitled to their facts. For those who turn to a hastily released statement sent to CNN from Sarah Huckabee Sanders' White House communication team. Sarah is currently with Trump in Asia and you just know she would have loved to deliver this stinging rebuke in person, so just imagine her voice speaking the following statement for full effect. If one presidential candidate can disassemble a political party, it speaks volumes about how strong a legacy its past two presidents really had. And that begins with the Iraq War, one of the greatest foreign policy mistakes in American history. President Trump remains focused on keeping his promises to the American people by bringing back jobs, promoting an America first foreign policy and standing up for the forgotten men and women of our great county. Correct. I guess the establishment has not gotten over their historic route in the 2016 elections, where Trump took on not just the GOP but the entire Democratic establishment and wiped the floor with a bunch. Share this if you think America made the right choice in electing Trump. Donna Brazile discovers new, absolutely brutal way to humiliate Hillary Clinton for rest of her life. If you thought Donna Brazile was out of nuke bombs to drop on Hillary Clinton's head you thought wrong. The Washington Post which has an advanced copy of Brazile's new book, Hacks, the inside story of the break-ins and breakdowns that put Donald Trump in the White House, just crushed Hillary with a new one. Donna Brazile was going to replace Hillary at the top of the ticket. According to the DNC charter, Donna had the power to replace Hillary and she seriously considered it. From the Post she seriously contemplated replacing Hillary Clinton as the party's 2016 presidential nominee within Vice President Biden in the aftermath of Clinton's fainting spell, in part because Clinton's campaign was anemic and had taken on the odor of failure. In other words it was worse than anyone thought, and as each new revelation throws cold water on her Putin excuse it makes one wonder about Mueller. Donna says she considered multiple different options to replace Hillary and in the end decided on Joe Biden and Senator Cory Booker. Because she thought, as did everyone else in America except Hillary, that the key to victory was the working class vote and they hated Hillary but tended to like Biden. But in the end, political correctness and sexism kept her from doing the one thing that may have saved the Dems, I thought of Hillary, and all the women in the country who were so proud of and excited about her. I could not do this to them. I bet they think differently now, huh Donna? While we appreciate the real truth, the liberals will turn on you because they see Trump as worse than Hitler and they will blame you for not saving them from him. Get ready Donna. It will be brutal. Donna also ripped Hillary's campaign for lack of messaging. And worse, lack of enthusiasm, writing that Hillary's Brooklyn HQ was like someone had died. No enthusiasm. No energy, no passion, the last gasp of the dying establishment and we were lucky enough to get a front row seat for the glorious spectacle. Share if you agree. Antifa rallies just erupted in 20 American cities, see which cities to stay away from. The left-wing terrorist group Antifa and Refuse Fascism is planning rallies in 20 different cities across the United States and wanted to demand that Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence should be driven from power. 
In a full-page ad in the New York Times, the group announced where they plan on protesting. Here are the ads they are running. The head of the refused fascism organization told Newsweek in a phone interview the following. What Trump and his administration are doing could pose an existential threat to humanity, and Z told Newsweek in a phone interview. We're in one of the most perilous moments in history right now, Z said. Look what they wrote about Trump's Twitter being taken down. Newt Gingrich just risked everything to tell shocking truth about coming war with radical Islamic terrorists. Newt Gingrich just came forward and hopefully the swamp is listening. Look, we elected Trump in part because of his common sense, the left will say too tough, approach to immigration especially immigration from war-torn Muslim countries. It is not politically correct to say we are fighting a war with radical Islamic terrorists but that is the truth and it is a worldwide war. Make no mistake. They radicals want to see their bastardized version of Islam take over the world. And what is shocking is that the liberals, who in these countries bear the brunt of the violence, are standing in the way of Trump's best efforts to stop the spread of this cancer. This moment of cowardice will haunt them for a long time. But Newt is not afraid of the backlash, and he will get one, for the truth he just wrote on Fox News website. Newt applauded Trump's idea to end the diversity lottery and then offered three simple solutions that the left will hate but are just simple common sense. Newt wrote. First, we need to identify terrorists as enemy combatants. Correct no more Miranda rights. This should be a no-brainer. Second, we have a disturbingly large number of homegrown American citizens being radicalized. We must develop a new legal framework for dealing with local and imported terrorists alike. No arguments here. Third, we must find out how people are radicalized in America and cut off these sources of radicalization. This might include, when necessary, monitoring and closing radical mosques that encourage violence. This means we have to surveil them and get informants in there, you know let the police and FBI do their jobs without liberal backlash. But it was what he revealed in his conclusion that is the most important. For he risked everything, and everyone will come after him for saying this, to tell the truth about coming war with radical Islamic terrorists. This is going to be a long war with radical Islamic supremacists. Closing the immigration lottery system immediately is an important step, but we will need to do far more than this in order to be truly safe. Yes. This is a war for the soul of the entire world and we need to start treating it as such. Share if you agree.